Today, I'm talking about self-confidence and the secrets to self-confidence by doing these two things. All right, listen, man, I have read hundreds of books on self-confidence. Big, big, big fan of Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, on and on and on. And I feel like this is so well connected to dating. And listen, if you do these two things, which I'm going to cover in this video, your self-confidence will go through the roof, okay? So stick with me and you'll learn the secrets to self-confidence with these two things. So listen, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Kane. I'm the Silver Bachelor. This channel is 100% dedicated to dating advice for older guys. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification button because I'm dropping video every day. All right, man. Woo! This is exciting. I'm excited about this video. I'm just, yes, it's because I, I'm a huge proponent, like I said, of self-confidence, personal development, all that stuff. So this is going to be a bit of a longer video because it's very important that I go through these two things. But you know what? I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'll give you these two things right now, and then I'll explain each one, okay? Unlike these other YouTubers where they keep you hanging the whole time, no, no. This is one thing you can enjoy about a lot of my videos is I give it to you straight up front, right? So here are the two secrets to building self-confidence. Number one, money. And you might be thinking, well, that's obvious. Well, maybe not. And the other two is muscles. Money and muscles. So I'm going to now explain why each one is important and what it's done for me in my personal development journey and building my self-confidence, okay? So I made a whole bunch of notes. If you see me looking over here, that's why, okay? So first of all, let's talk about money. When you have more money, you have more options. And this is the key one. You have less anxiety. That's a big one that people don't talk about. They keep focusing on, well, you have these options. It's easier for you to pay your bills and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, you have less anxiety. You have less stress. Now, some of you might say, well, fuck, man, I'm, uh, I'm killing it and I'm more stressful. No, you know what? You're more stressed because I've been both places. I've been super broke. I was married before and I've been single for two and a half years now. And listen, I was broke before I got married and I was very anxious. I was very stressed. I had no idea what I was going to do with my career. Also, during the marriage, I had a lot of financial challenges, trying to just get go, get things going, my career kind of up in the air, all these things. So that's my opinion, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of men that agree with me. It's better, you have a lot less stress and anxiety when you have money than when you don't have money, okay? So money helps, gives you more options, and it is less anxiety for you. All right, so... I'm just going to give you a little, a little story on why money is significant. So one back in the day, I was a financial advisor and I was young. I was way too young to get into that market at that time. But anyways, that's what I did. And I remember working with the stockbroker and the stockbroker at the time, he was also a young guy, like in his twenties. Okay. And he said that his goal was to make a hundred thousand after so many years of being a stockbroker. Great. So then one day I'm at his place and we're having some drinks and he, I see something on the wall and I said, oh, that's cool. What is that? And he's like, that's my T4 from when I broke $100,000 and he had it framed, which was pretty fucking cool. So he decided to take his father to Vegas to celebrate. All right. And that's that's the other thing, man, as a third thing. So third thing with money is money gives you more options. It it's, gives you less anxiety and it fulfills a goal. Like it gives you purpose. And when you achieve that, it's fucking awesome. Like I can't explain how damn awesome it is. When you hit a financial milestone because you've been working your ass off to get there, it feels amazing. So that's the stockbroker story. My story is I'm a marketing executive. I've been a marketing executive for most of my career. I did not make $100,000 a year for a good chunk of my career, right? 
So then one time or one job, I get this job and I'm in the HVAC business. So one job, I was, I got the, my first HVAC job and it was a senior level and I got quite a boost, a boost in pay and a boost in seniority. And I worked my ass off to get that motherfucking job. Okay. I can't, I can't emphasize this. So here's the thing. Now you're competing, right? With people that are really, really good at what they do. So I had five interviews. The last interview I had to put together a business case, right? Basically a marketing plan, high level, but detailed enough where my final interview was with the, the CEO for North America. And it was just him and I, and I was to present my marketing plan to him. Okay. And I spent hours on this motherfucking thing. I probably put 20 hours into this presentation and this marketing plan because I really, really wanted the job. And by the way, guys, I don't know how many of you that are watching that are subscribers that make over six figures. Okay. But this is one thing I've learned the higher up you go, right. In terms of income jobs, not all jobs, but I'm saying in the private sector, mostly that last interview, especially if it's in sales or marketing, that last interview, they want you to come prepared with some kind of business case, some kind of analysis, some kind of presentation. They want to, and I know it seems a little unfair and you're thinking, well, fuck man, I got to put in all this work and maybe they're just going to grab the candidates, um, ideas and use those. Well, yeah, they are. So, but to compete at that level, and I'm talking six figures, six, 150, 200, etc. you most likely are going to have to put together some kind of business case because they want to know, wait, if we're spending this money on you, what are you going to bring to the table? Like, how are you going to help us? So I freaking put my heart and soul into this presentation and guess what? Boom, I get the job. And in fact, every single job where I've had that many presentations, very few did I not get because I kicked ass on that presentation. And so when this is the thing, like when you put in that much work and effort and you actually get it, like you get the job, you get a boost in your pay. My God, does that feel good? You guys have no idea. And I'm going to say this. You have no idea the amount of time and effort that goes into YouTube, right? I created this channel in October, 2023. Well, a little bit before that, but I actually posted my first video, first series of videos in October, 2023. And you see on my channel, if you're a subscriber, a video is hitting the channel every single day because I want to accelerate my success. I want to, I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to be 10 years out, right? Especially at my age. I don't want to be 10 years waiting for some decent paychecks from YouTube. I want to accelerate that shit down to like two, three years where I'm now making fucking good money. And the thing is what a lot of you guys don't realize about YouTube, it's all volume. It's volume, volume, volume. You cannot be successful. It's very rare. If you can, you cannot be successful again, very rare with a video per week. Nope, not happening. You have to publish more than one video per week. I decided this is on me. I decided to publish a video every day and I'm willing to do that for the first three years to give this a good, good shot. And here's the thing, man, when YouTubers break the 50,000 and I would actually go so far as to say, once they break the hundred thousand dollar mark, they get a silver plaque. Well, now sponsors are coming out of the woodwork. You're not considered a micro influencer anymore. You are making good money and you're probably wondering, well, how much money? Okay. Here's an example. This is sponsorship. This isn't ads, right? So I personally hired an influencer who had hundred thousand dollars, a YouTuber to do an unboxing video, not of a product of mine, my employer's product, tech product. And I paid that influencer $20,000 for a five minute unboxing video, right? So in terms of monthly income at a hundred thousand on the low end, you're probably pulling in again, depending on the niche and all that stuff. And I'm saying in general, you're probably pulling in anywhere from five grand a month at a hundred thousand subscribers. And I know it depends on how many views you have and all this stuff. Well, forget all that. 
you have a hundred, just in general, baseline, hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand subscribers, you're pulling in five thousand dollars per month to twenty thousand a month, maybe more. So it's quite a range, but basically on the low end, five thousand, and let's say on the high end, twenty thousand, right? That's ad revenue, ad revenue only, not sponsors. So even at five grand a month, what could you guys do with an extra five grand a month? Right, that's good fucking money. And that's why that's the number one thing I'm talking about in terms of self-confidence. When you make your own money, like listen to this. Not only do I have an executive career, career I have this YouTube channel. Okay, it's not making $5,000 a month yet. I DJ on the side. I do consulting on the side that pays well. And I sell toilet paper. Yes, I sell toilet paper by the container load. I do private label toilet paper brokerage stuff. And when you make your own money, and this is the point, you make your own money. My God, does that feel good? It gives you more options. It makes you feel like you're achieving something, your purpose, your passion, and you're getting rewarded for it. So that's the number one thing, okay? The number one thing for self-confidence boosting is making money. And more money, the better. Now, number two, muscles. All right, I will share this with you. So during, during my marriage, right, I was married for 20 years. I basically stopped going to the gym. I stopped taking care of myself. Shame on me for that. My ex-wife started losing interest in me over time. And that's one of the ways she started losing interest. She didn't say this, but of course I know this. When you stop taking care of yourself, women start to see you as weak. And I'm sorry, man, when you are flabby and you're not going to the gym, you are not the alpha male that she is hoping you are. So when you go to the gym for yourself, you feel fucking awesome. You feel strong. You look at yourself in the mirror. I can see myself right now because I've got the front facing camera and I can see my arms, right? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm fucking yeah, like, right? Like I feel fucking awesome. And I can't emphasize that enough. And when you're around other men, you're like, yeah, I could take that motherfucker or I can hold my own with one man, two men, eh, right? Depending on the situation, like you just feel, you feel strong, you feel alpha and women are drawn to that. Like, bro, I cannot emphasize this enough more than money. I probably should have put this first muscles first over money, right? Because by the way, guys, only 15% of men make over six figures, only 15%. But the thing is, what's wild is since I've been dating, so two and a half years I've been dating, and women, that's the first thing they see. They don't know how much money you have. They don't see the car you just got out of. You're just walking along somewhere or you're in a restaurant, bar, and they don't know anything about you. They just make a judgment call based on the way you look. Guess what? <coughs> Excuse me. That's what they're looking for initially is they, or that what they see initially is they see what you look like. And that is what is going to get them sexually aroused and have higher desire for you is, is your muscles, what they see. So, but that aside, the dating, what it does to your self-confidence is just massive. Like, bro, I don't, I started developing all kinds of insecurities and I felt weak. I wasn't strong. And the thing is, you go to the gym, you look good, you see yourself in the mirror, you're lifting heavy weights or good weights. Like you just feel fucking amazing. And that doesn't matter your age, bro. So I've been going on on this video. And so thanks for sticking with me this long. But uh, let me know what you're, in the comments what you think. If you agree, you disagree. But like I said, money and muscles are the two secrets to building your self-confidence. So thanks for sticking around and we'll see you next time.